I find you very rude. <laughs> The Novimbia Chanel is made possible by our gorgeous patrons who get early access, exclusive content, and buyer's remorse. And a Herb Ertlinger to our brand new patrons, James Hall, Rachel E.P., Johanna, and Timothy. Let's start the shit show. Sweaty. I'm like just wafting a fan between my legs right you, now. First of all, you have to put that fan down because you know with the green screen it just like goes all fanny and fuck. Well, you can't see the fan right now. No, I know, but I can fucking see it and you're wafting your vagina. Yeah. Good, uh, good afternoon. I am doing that. Good afternoon, viewers of the Novimpia Lifestyle. This is Nova, <laughs> and I'm Grammy Award winning artist Shania Twain. That's not true. Well, actually, you are Katie Price. Would uh, seem. Yeah. It would seem, bit. Nova, coming for my fucking gig. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. No, don't do that. You and Charmaine are going to be absolutely unbearable with those. Just off I the bat. I don't know what that like, just kind of takes over you. Like, as soon as you've got tits, you're just like, oh, yeah, tits. I don't do that. My fantastic norks. This video was kind of like suggested by a few of our patrons. I'm not really sure where this is going to go. I just wanted to have like a bit of a discussion, a little bit of a chat. Open um, discourse. Yes. And I did also pose this topic on Twitter earlier, so I've got like a few tweets from people that we can look at towards the end mm -hmm, to like mm -hmm, talk about. Mm -hmm. But um, we thought it'd be interesting to chat about femininity and masculinity and the power or lack of power each of those things have, regardless of your actual gender. And then I guess as well how that impacts like queer people growing up, specifically because from our point of view, um, certainly mine, we'll get into that a little bit, growing up with like trying to kind of like hide certain aspects of yourself whilst trying to pander to what people think is how you should behave, right? Yes. And at the top end of this, I just want to read this tweet because this sort of sums up, I think, what we want to discuss. It's by someone called Alexander Leon. And I read this and I literally kind of stopped and I was just like, that's exactly what it fucking is. So he writes, Queer people don't grow up as ourselves. We grow up playing a version of ourselves that sacrifices authenticity to minimise humiliation and prejudice. The massive task of our adult lives is to unpick which parts of ourselves are truly us and which parts we've created to protect us. Yeah, I remember now, reading that. Do you and did you feel all sorts of things when you read that? Because yeah. I did. I have gone the other way completely. I've I've sort of created even more. <laughs> My personality is, you know, completely pretend and I don't mind that. Let's start off with what we can talk about first and foremost, ourselves being gay men. Now I know that we have an enormous amount of privilege being A white and B cisgender, but we can only we can't speak on behalf of those groups of people, but we can speak about our own experiences. Mm. And I do think there is a certain amount of oppression just by being gay alone. And I can't imagine that being combined with all the rest of the things that I've with mentioned. The, with, yes, other sort of minorities. Yeah. Like, it was, personally for me, as a, not necessarily a child, I suppose, nine, ten, to, you know, to the age of 18, um, it, horrible. It, for me, it was really awful. And I tried my fucking hardest to suppress, specifically, my feminine behaviour, because I was told every day, I mean, it's, school, your school life is kind of where you spend the majority of your time as a teenager, right? Your mm. like waking life. And it's sort of a microcosm for like the greater world because that's when you first come into contact with people who are sort of judging you and stuff. And so I was called girly whirly. I was called like, I mean, every, every kind of fucking thing, but it kind of really came back to feminine behavior. And I went to an all boys school and it was like, a rugby kind of academy or something. Well, they did rugby. I don't fucking know what it was. But, um, you know, in, in playing sports and stuff, that was really, really tricky. And so generally for me, I shut everything down because I reached the kind of um, conclusion that whatever I said was going to be feminine because my voice in and of itself was kind of higher mm. and my inflections were a bit kind of that gay voice kind of, not as bad as like Will Young gay voice, you know that? <laughs> But it was pretty bad, so I would shut everything down, and I grew my hair in front of my face, and I just didn't want to speak to anyone, so I just like closed myself off for a I bit. I think a lot of queer people have had that kind of um, angsty phase, maybe not even a phase, maybe they still have it, but um, a lot of people have had like hair in front of their face, like the emo kind of like punk mm. kind of aesthetic. I think everyone's kind of been through that and it's really just an attempt to try, and, try to like hide into the background. Shut yourself off and just be like, it's kind of like the hairstyle yeah. equivalent of walking through town with your headphones in because you don't want to be spoken to. That to me is a universal symbol for don't fucking offer me some flyer or some shit. 
don't, don't talk to me. Do you get that? Yeah. So it's kind of like that. So I would, that was kind of my mechanism for doing it, was literally, don't say a fucking thing. Which is, I mean, in retrospect, horrible. Very, very kind of su suppress, oppressive, whatever. But I think in the long run, for me, it's what made me use, like, humour as kind of like a weapon. So in the long run, for me, it's kind of, it was kind of useful, I suppose, in certain aspects. But, you know, the fact that there are kids who will still be doing that is horrifying to me. Because I wouldn't wish that on anyone, and any kid, it's horrible. Your school life was, your school was rough as assholes, right? Yeah, so I remember as a very, very young child, like I'm talking like really, really young, like under 10, being super influenced by American TV and like the Disney Channel. And I thought, I didn't have many friends because already like, I was seen as being gay because I did not like football. And that That's in the, the one UK, thing, isn't it? It's like the one thing that gets you like friends with the boys. All the boys! They are all obsessed ah, with football. Oh, the boys! And if you don't like football, then there's something wrong with you. Like, yes. why don't you like football? That is a thing. I wonder if it's still the same. Uh, people with little brothers and sisters, or, you know, little cousins or whatever, or indeed kids, if, if you can comment about this, if. If that's still a thing, if little boys not playing football is perceived as uh, weird, because I got that relentlessly, was, why don't you want to play football, boys yeah. play football? Yeah. And I remember just saying to them, like, I really can't, I don't see the interest in just, like, kicking around a ball. To me, that's just dull. Like, it's so fucking dull. Like, I can't, and people were like, God, you're so weird. Immediately, for the whole kind of rest of my time in that school, and then a bunch of the guys from that school went on to my other one, so I couldn't get away from them at all. There was like no fresh slate. It was constantly like, that's the weird femme, like, perf who won't play football. And that used to haunt me to the point where I would try and, and like football at one point. I can remember, did you ever try? No. I gave it a go for like a minute. And I remember people saying to me, oh, why are you playing football? You don't like football. I was like, you can't fucking win with these kids. I saw a really interesting, um, I think it was a tweet, I can't quite remember, and it was about a, it was a tweet from a trans woman, and she said that all the way through my um, childhood and adolescence, I was called a girl because I was such a feminine guy, and now I've transitioned, the same people call me a boy. Mm. So you can't win. You literally cannot win because it's either side of it, you're breaking out of that kind of like mold that I don't know why that's so ingrained in people that if, if you're any slightly, you know, different, then you're like, a, well, let's throw fucking like tomatoes at you. Because I guess the, the, the main answer to all of our questions is people are stupid. In, in some interpretation, you could say they've kind of like accepted defeat and they've been like, all right, well, if you say I'm a woman, fine, I'm a woman, and that's still not good enough. It would never have been good enough because they could have lived a lie and tried to have butched themselves up and that wouldn't have worked. No. Um, or they could have, you know, this individual living their truth and it's, again, it's still not going to be good enough because people are just insecure to the point that they will still, these kind of people who never leave school, do they, really, in their minds, they never leave that kind of mindset. They never grow out of it and they are constantly going to be kind of belittling people because they are insecure about themselves. They can't get out of that mindset that everything has to be in the, the way that they kind of perceive the world, you know what I mean? They have people to see everything scared as... scared of the other People are scared of change. I think if somebody has lived their life quite happily in their own neat little boxes, as soon as something comes along and starts to mess those up, they freak out because they've not, they've not had the opportunity to imagine what life could be without their little boxes. And that often leads to aggression and anger, whether inflicted on yourself or on others. I think people need to just try to, they need to loosen up a little bit and be a little bit more open to new things, new ideas, and just- Loosen up more. a bit, tell her that. <laughs> As a very young child, just subconsciously being very influenced by American TV and the Disney Channel, um, all, all of that stuff, I, to try and like, I didn't, this wasn't a conscious decision, I don't think, but it just was, looking back, this is what I was doing, to try and kind of like be cool and to try and like get more friends, I would 
imitate or like adapt behaviors from like American TV. Not necessarily, I think a lot of kids like have like American accents like with their friends and stuff like that's the thing that a lot of parents like hate, but it's just like a Disney thing. There's a lot of, that's a really common thing with like Well, where are British you kids. going with this? But I would try to be like cool and end up being like fucking camp and as femme as you like, because I'd be imitating what I'm seeing on like these TV shows. Like I used to love Sailor Moon and That's So Raven and shit like that. And I would imitate the behaviors of like these women on, on American TV <laughs> thinking that was like cool because they're famous and they're on TV there's, like, guys and they're super football. popular so I would kind In of like playground. adapt those kinds of mannerisms language and shit like that not even realising what that meant and then eventually starting to realise because the amount of times that people would call me like um, a fag or a puff or whatever because of that that was when that kind of like morphed away and I would bury myself in my studies and then I started to get bullied not for being gay but for being smart because being smart was not cool at school so I used to read a lot I was at the top of my class I got put ahead a year and then I used to get bullied for being too smart which I think is fascinating that's like a completely different thing like why are kids like bullying other kids for like being smart what is well, that? Well that was probably a level of envy yeah, but that is so bizarre to me. Because it's other, isn't it? It's different. If you're if you're that, you're yeah. like a nerd. If you don't fit into a regular, you're a girl, therefore you have long hair and you're into makeup and you like shoes or whatever it is. This is just from the perspective of like kids and teenagers. And then a boy, if you're not like smelly and unhygienic and you play football, you are some kind of alien creature. So being smart, all right, okay, that could be for either. But there weren't, there was always like a couple, weren't there? There was a couple of kids in your year that were like crazy smart. Someone's like, who's yeah. the smart? You're like, oh, they are. They're, what, is, what was the boffin? Boffin. Yeah, that was call, what I was them called a boffin. all the time. All the time. So then I kind of realised that, didn't last that actually, if I forgot my homework one day, or I said that I didn't know a question or something, people, that seemed to respond really well with people. That used to get a really good response. The people would actually kind of like pay attention to me or talk to me. So as sad as this is, I used to like really dumb it down like in class and only really show <gasps> You're it You're Katie like, Heron! Class. Yeah, that is exactly what I did. That is exactly what I did. I that is Katie exactly Heron. what she yeah. did. And then that started to morph into the whole, like you said, just like I had long hair in front of my face. I would like listen to music and I used to hang around with like all of the alternative kids because there was always like there was always like a common ground with those kids and like a few of the boys would be like oh I'm bi and so with the girls and there was always ah! like do you know what I mean? The weirdos. Was that kind of culture. You were a wildly un unattractive teenager. Yeah I was. That didn't help either. I'm just putting I had, that like, out there. Buck teeth. I had glasses. That I'm sorry really but I'm literally imagining like kids in the playground playing football boys and then you're in the corner pretending to be brave and just turning around going <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, what also I find fascinating is I kind of had that throughout my entire school experience right. I started to not even like pay any attention because you just get used to it you get numb to it so I'm, this might sound like I had the most awful childhood I didn't like, I wasn't really that bothered by bullying, ultimately. It was there, it was so prevalent, but I genuinely did just kind of ignore it. I was so used to it. It was constant, just names in the corridor, or like, kicking your shins or whatever. I, honest to God, I barely even remember it, because it was just like, it didn't really mean anything to me. And I remember going into sixth form, and instantly it was all gone completely gone. The kids that would use to take the piss out of me no longer gave a shit. Everybody had different priorities. That was a Sixth very form, it was refreshing like, time. Overnight, everything changed and nobody cared anymore. And that you was know what it was though, is because I feel like a lot of the time kids had to get kind of like a rise or had to get some kind of like power in the playground by belittling other people. And as soon as you kind of reach that age where you're in like the, the upper sort of levels or whatever, sixth form, whatever, um, which I don't know what the American equivalent is, some sort of like sophomore, <laughs> whatever. It is, you're older, you're like, like 18, like 17, 18. Yeah, 17, 18. You can 18. drive cars. I think that's the thing is when people decided they could start going out and like socializing on their own kind of like, they could go see friends, they could drive places, just you get into nightclubs. You realize that the, that, that kind of like power that you got from like shitting on like other people was it didn't give you power anymore, so you kind of re you kind of grew, grew out of it. And it really was like an overnight thing. It was the most liberating thing to be able to talk to people who used to shit on you. And there was a hierarchy, isn't there? I used to be absolutely relentlessly shat on by this one guy 
um, all the way through like primary school, whatever the first school is, and then he came to the other one. And he used to relentlessly um, torment me all the time. And I used to be so shit scared of him. If he was coming down the corridor, I'd go somewhere else because I just didn't want to have to listen yeah. to it. But he was um, Asian, and I always wondered, like looking back, if he did it so much to me because he knew that he was also slightly lower down the chain. So I did this as well. In upper school, I started to pick on kids, so I made sure that I was not you at the bottom. You weren't at the bottom. It's yeah. a really Which sad is horrible. thing. It's I horrible, and I do feel guilty, but I always made sure there was a group of kids. I did the same. And you know what? It actually started to become the smarter kids that I used to pick on. <sighs> I didn't it's, want to be at yeah, the bottom. It's like hard, isn't it? I, I, there was one, there was this one kid in our school and he was caught um, masturbating in a cubicle and someone stuck their phone over the cubicle and got a picture oh of him like, like jerking it to like, I don't know if he had like a porn or like a magazine or something. And he was tormented like intensely forever and ever and I was just like, oh great, I'll get on that. So I joined all the bullies and started yeah. like, sh you know, shitting on him. Not really, but... But so that's kind of like our background and experience with dealing with that like as children and growing up, somebody in our Discord mentioned a really interesting topic, which is what I'm kind of leaning toward, leading up to, mm. is how they today, as a grown adult, feel consciously uncomfortable and will actively try to avoid cisgender, heterosexual men when they can. And we kind of touched on this a bit in the Discord, but I wanted to talk about it more. And it is, I said, well, that's no surprise. It's because, generally speaking, queer people, oh, this sounds dramatic, but it's not at all. They have proper PTSD from being bullied as a child. Mm. I mean, I think the point is, generally speaking, is that society still deems, and this is from their perspective, that men are the 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 stronger sex. This is this is the way. I mean, if we can get into some kind of like anthropological whatever conversation here, it's because men have always been physically bigger and stronger than women. So over time, and we go, you go, go back to cavemen. You know, how do you assert dominance? A lot of stupid people still assert dominance with like physical physicality, yeah. right? With like violence. Yeah. So that's why men are you know phys they are physically bigger and in most cases physically stronger. Um, and therefore, that's why over time they have been deemed to be the sex that like gets shit done, right? And so that is why masculinity being the kind of like prized of the two, you know, women can have kind of either. I mean, it comes in with there's there's different issues with like women who are masculine. People have different issues. With I would that. just have to preface this with like women have been consistently shat on for all of history mm -hmm. and have always been less than men always throughout mm -hmm. history but it is interesting to see that if a, a woman starts to show masculine traits or is a tomboy generally speaking not all the time but generally speaking that is more socially acceptable than if a man does shows it the other way around traits because it's like it's the woman dirty. is it, it's 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 seen to it be that the woman is strength is showing the strength but the or, man is showing weakness yes. because he's not um, he's not showing the, the masculine kind yes. of this, whatever it is. He's showing feminine, yes. which which society still considers to be weaker than. And it's funny that if you were to, sh you know, ask some kind of really homophobic, stupid kind of, you know, I'm just thinking of like a Karen type yeah. bird, you know what I mean? Really homophobic, maybe a bit Christian or whatever. You know, she has a daughter or whatever that's considered, um, you know, really feminine, love that. Oh, you know. Votes for women. Oh, women deserve to be paid equal in the workplace. All of this X, Y, Z. And then as soon as they see a gay a, a man, not even a gay man necessarily, but a, a bloke who's like a little bit kind of like SpongeBob, <laughs> then of course it's just like, oh, I don't know about him. Mm -mm, yeah. No, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Dumb. It's so dumb. It's fucking the worst thing in the world. And I think it kind of it. You still see if you if you take it down to like when you raise little kids trying to put them into certain you still see it don't you like the gender reveal parties or whatever like i know yeah. that's i know that is kind of in effect harmless because the baby isn't there yet so you're not really forcing anything on the child i don't think it is because what you're doing is you're setting a standard for all of the people at that party how they're going to treat your child yes you are basically saying to them we are so excited about the gender of our child this is now how this is going to be, so you all need to be equally as excited and equally mm -hmm. as pushing this on yes. them. Well, a lot of people that do gender reveal parties, I'm sure it's perfectly innocent and it's literally just an excuse to have people around and celebrate and, oh, so now what are you going to call them? It's kind of a, 
a way of saying like, oh, what's the name gonna be, you know, whatever. And a lot of people are very keen, very quick and very keen to be like, I'm not gonna be making my little boy like play the football in a blue room that's got like trains in it and like robots and stuff. It'll be kind of whatever they kind of like lead towards. It might be more kind of like, I don't know, mythical creatures, or it's kind of like somewhere in the mid a middle ground yeah. kind of thing. Um, so the actual gender reveal party itself isn't necessarily the worst thing ever, but it's still very, very prevalent that you will, that people will take like a doll off, off a little boy, which is fucked up. That's yeah. so fucking fucked up. We've done a whole video about like gay stereotypes, haven't we? And I think we touched a little bit on gender stereotypes in that. But this all, the fact that we keep relating gender to sexuality. Somebody else asked on Twitter, if I can find the tweet, I'll show it up. They wanted us to talk about the kind of expectations of um, that, that strangers have of you regarding how masculine or feminine you are as soon as they find out you're gay or straight. Because a lot of people, as soon as they hear that you're gay, will automatically assume that you're going to be a certain way. And then there's also that whole conversation where, for whatever reason, there's a lot of ignorant straight people who think it's a compliment to tell you that you don't behave gay, you don't act gay, I would never have guessed you were gay. Or likewise for trans never people, guessed. it's a little bit different, but it's not a compliment to tell a trans person that, oh, I would never have guessed, you look really good for a trans, for someone who's transgender. Like. It's just, it, it, it's kind of like, it's very invasive to say things like that because it can really knock people back for six. Like they're not expecting that kind of, it, you're kind of clocking someone for, for their, their gender yes, or their sexuality. Yes, they, because they think you're going to be like, oh, you must know what you're talking about. You're in the club, you figured me out. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, if, if you really wanted to kind of get on that person's good side, you wouldn't even fucking mention it. I mean, there is a stereotype that all gay men or most gay men are very femme, very, very camp. And I think that also comes from a, a bit of like, everyone wants to kind of see in, in relationships who is the man and who is the woman. Oh, that's the absolute worst. People still ask that. Yeah. People still ask. And that ask. also comes down, comes down to, to sex. And I think because a lot of people think about gay sex and they their mind just starts to go and it, and it wanders and they automatically think like, well, who's the man and who's the woman? Who's the top and who's the like, bottom? Like, is that what you're really asking? Because Do you really want to know that information? being a bottom is more like, it's it's receiving, it's it's more submissive, it, it's being like a woman, it's being feminine, and then being a top is the, is the opposite. But th that's where these stereotypes come from. But then again, this all comes back to like putting people in boxes. That's not always as clear cut as that. Why do we always have to label things so other people can kind of understand them and make sense of them? I said this in a podcast once, and I think it, the, the, the real, the best way you could like teach a kid to kind of like respect other people or indeed yourself, if you still kind of have these kind of like, not necessarily prejudices, but if you have kind of things in your mind, like um, preconceptions or ideas or stereotypes about people that you might want to kind of like try and just brush away from yourself, is that if you really bear in mind that you don't know, you don't know the first thing about someone just looking at them, you don't know a fucking thing. Based on their skin tone, you, you might assume they have an accent. You don't know that, yeah. you don't know a fucking thing. Someone could be super, super feminine, and they could be straight with a wife and kids. Let's talk about that guy from the Bon Appetit test kitchen. Yeah. We thought he was a gayer. Yeah. He's not. You can't, you don't know that about someone. Yeah. Just because they're slightly loose in the wrist and they're like cooking. Yeah. You don't fucking know that. They might be yeah. giving it to a vagina all night long. You've got no fucking idea. So just based on looking at someone, this is great advice just for everyone. I'm giving it, therefore I'm saying it's great. <laughs> you don't know a fucking thing about a single goddamn person just looking at them. Don't make assumptions. So you don't need to, therefore, just kind of like figure out everything about this person's like sex life or whatever it is. Um, you just, it just is helpful to get to know the person in general rather than just kind of like throwing shit at them. And I think as well, as far as dating goes, because this is very prevalent in the, in the gay community, people having a preference for more masculine men over feminine men, or sometimes vice versa, but people just kind of cutting off just limiting themselves to a certain type of person and not just blinkering themselves to, to anything else. I think it's it's all right to know that you are particularly attracted to a certain quality of person, or quality of person, quality of like personality or a certain aspect of somebody, but to completely 
cut off the idea of ever pursuing anyone else that doesn't fall into your very narrow little box. That thing is your weird. own stupidity. That's very strange. You could have your absolute soulmate out there just because they don't fit the box your, of your preconception. You're missing out. I think that's so stupid. No, so that, if I had to write down, like when I first met Nova, if you'd ask me what my type was and I had to like write down like a list of things, she didn't tick a single fucking one of them. Likewise. Not at all. I, I find her so unattractive. <laughs> and I was just like, I, you know, who the fuck knows? Like, you don't got a clue. Let's no, just see, exactly. Let's just go see where it fucking goes. Who knows? Um, are you trying to... Is it because I'm not Asian? Is that what it is? That's a lot of it. What is the most masculine thing about me, do you think? Apart from my great big swinging donkey dick. <laughs> In terms of what people consider to be masculine, mask for mask. You're very... Or you at least appear to be very confident. You do things with... Confidence. You're not. You don't seem outwardly, at least, to doubt what you're doing. You do something, and you just do it. Mm, that's interesting. I, I see. I thought you would have gone for something like physical. Like I, like I sometimes just haven't shaved for ages, and I just look like a slob. <laughs> that's weird that you've said that. Like you, you associate masculinity with confidence. I guess so. But I don't. That seems like bad though, in, in a way. Kind of like men just do whatever without any, without thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, so it was not a compliment. Um, well, it, I, it is in a way. It's a conversation that we never have because the kind of people we surround ourselves with, we don't really get into that with anything, do we? Yeah. I don't know because I guess we have so many friends who are just like all over the fucking place that it's just like not even part of our sphere to talk about it. Somebody said to touch on what do we think about um, gender fluidity? I think gender fluidity is the most natural thing in the world and it, it baffles me when people can't get their head around it and they're just like, oh, these millennials, these fucking, they want to be called this and that and they can't, they have got pronouns, fuck your pronouns, whatever it is, and they can't understand that what they've grown up in is the matrix, essentially, because they're told how a man should act, how a woman should act, but really, it's so, like, both, both sides of the same sphere, everyone encompasses parts of both. And it's, I think, the most natural thing to be, like, gender fluid. If I had any kind of education beyond the single third A4 piece of paper in biology saying that gay people exist and that's okay, if I had anything beyond that, I think I would have been a lot happier. And if everyone else was told more that you didn't have to like the opposite sex, you didn't have to be the, the gender you were assigned at birth, anything like that. If that world was, if that door was even slightly opened up, I just think that would have been like, my life would be completely different. Completely that, different. That, but also, it, I mean, the, it ends, it starts and ends really with how, how people are raising kids, which, you know, flat out should be that you, you're telling fucking kids. You listen to your child and they tell you, you let them guide you. You let them and you say to your kids, well, all right, someone might be a bit different. Doesn't mean they're any less than, than you. Maybe just speak to them and, you know, but befriend the them and continues. see what. So long as this education is not in schools, the cycle continues because these kids grow up oh, God. and they have children of their own. People That's boycotting, like, LGBT education in schools. You shouldn't yeah. have kids. I'm sorry, but yeah. quite frankly, you should not have children. Because uh, you're, not, you're not going to be raising them correctly. You're going to be raising them to be judgmental assholes. And there's a good chance, actually, that if you're watching this now and you are younger, that this is might be something that you're experiencing now. Um, and you may have heard it gets better. Obviously, that was a, a, a movement that was... Um, it went around for a long time, and after a while, I feel like people kind of wasn't... They weren't listening to that maybe so much. I think after a while, it deemed to be not as helpful as people hoped because it was. people needed help now. Yeah. People yeah. needed it to get out of the situations they were in or they needed the abuse or whatever was happening. They needed help now at the point of like, where they were in their lives at the time. Knowing that things are going to get better can only go so far. And that's why that movement kind of came Possibly. to an end. But the people were like, was, no, we need to start taking action now. I was just going to kind of like end this with the idea that if you are still of that age where you are being like tormented or, um, you know, you are kind of like concealing parts of yourself to survive, which the majority of us have done, and this is my point, if you're still doing it, um, those people in like most cases just do not grow up to have happy lives yeah and yours hasn't even begun yet like you yeah. have on the other side of it it's like an explosion of fun that you just don't you can't even like process that yet and those people that are like calling you like a girly uh, sissy like whatever or like a lesbo because you like have short hair or whatever 
Um, they don't ever amount to anything. So Puffins, to end there, um, you know, what do you think about masculinity? What is that? Hope you've enjoyed this little moment from, yeah. uh, from your aunties over here at the Novimpia Lifestyle. There'll be a message afterwards if you'd like to join our family over at the Patron. Mm. And we've got a Discord, actually, where, you know, we had the, the genesis of this video came from. Um, and there's some great discussions over there. And all the patrons get access to the Discord. Um, and our social media is, is downstairs as well. If there's any other topics different to this that you'd like to see us discuss in the same kind of style, let us know. Reach out to us on Twitter or um, in the comments down below here. And, yeah, if something like speaks to us, then we'll maybe do a video about it. <laughs> this has been beautiful. All right, bye, Puffins. Bye. Join our Patreon, make your parents not proud.